what happened in 1921 was not an isolated event. It's part of a continuum. There had been a number of racial conflicts in the United States. Each one of those was unique in its own way, but they also followed a similar theme. There were a lot of white folks who did not want to acknowledge that black Americans were Americans. What happened in Tulsa, the nearly 18 hours of continuous violence targeted at the Greenwood community, it is domestic terrorism. Everyone in the community was impacted. Everyone in the community had been terrorized. W.B. Du Bois actually called African Americans to close ranks. Du Bois were suggesting that black people should temporarily cease agitating for political and social equality, but instead fight uh, on behalf of U.S. interests abroad in World War I. The hope in doing so was that it would create white goodwill. The Greenwood District in Tulsa was begun in 1906 by a fellow named O.W. Gurley. He was a wealthy businessman who had migrated to Oklahoma prior to statehood. In the Greenwood District, you could find all manner of small businesses coupled with a concentration of service providers like doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, etc. Booker T. Washington is actually credited with labeling the community the Negro Wall Street of America. There were other black Wall Street communities, Durham, North Carolina comes to mind. These communities were seen as examples of black industriousness in the face of these incredibly uh, racist policies, practices, and procedures all throughout the country. There is the elevator incident between Dick Rowland and Sarah Page that sets in motion an allegation of sexual assault. We know that Sarah Page ultimately was not willing to press charges against Dick Rowland. There's one theory that the elevator jostle, he bumps into Sarah Page, or that startles her, and she flees the elevator. After Rowland was arrested, the Tulsa Tribune came out with a story that says, nab Negro for attack on girl in elevator. A group of angry whites begin to surround the county courthouse where Dick Rowland is being held. And so as it appears that a lynching is going to occur, black men went downtown armed to offer assistance to local authorities because they feared that Dick Rowland would be lynched. So all of these black guys going through downtown with guns kind of got the white folks upset. A white man tried to disarm one of the black men and the gun went off. When the gun went off, everything literally did turn into a riot. Whites began to fire upon the black men. The local authorities, the sheriff in particular, begins to deputize white men who just momentarily had been calling for the lynching of Dick Rowland. And so these men are empowered to arrest, detain, even kill black people who they perceive to be in rebellion. People were running everywhere, gunfire, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And the black men then began what you would call a retreat through the white downtown that lasted a couple of hours. At 5 a.m., groups of whites had organized themselves on the southern and western border of the Greenwood District and quite systematically go building to building to remove black people. The mob removed fine furnishings, grand pianos, clothing, money, safes from the homes of black people. And so in, in many ways, it prevented black people from passing down the wealth that had been accrued up until that point. If black people resisted in the process, they were often shot. The police had commandeered six airplanes. These were planes built to be used by the Americans in World War I. The official story was that these planes were being used for reconnaissance purposes. Mary Parrish was a young black woman who talks about it in terms of looking up and seeing these planes and thinking, this is what the Germans did to the Belgians in World War I. They're sending planes at us. These are aerial weapons. When the dust settled, we believe that somewhere between 100 and 300 people, most of them black, were killed. Property damage at the time, depending on how you translate to present value, conservatively, it's at least 
25 million. Nobody was held accountable for the devastation in Tulsa, nobody. But, you know, that was the case all over the place with these kinds of incidents. The insurance companies that owed black residents for the damages that they suffered during the massacre, they never paid claims that were filed. Uh, there really wasn't anybody in power and authority who was willing to do anything about it, either to hold people accountable for the destruction or to provide recompense or reparations for the black community. The rebuilding began almost immediately, even though the city authorities tried to prevent that. We fast forward 20 years to 1941. The Greenwood District has rebuilt itself. And not only has it rebuilt itself, it is bigger. Um, there are more black people who reside in the Greenwood District. There are more businesses. I think the story of resilience, the story of rebuilding, is the story that the community most wants the world to know.